I can't fight you on the net. Right. We we don't make statements. We don't go to jail for statements. Ain't no statements in our PSI. <laughs> You can't show it. You know what I'm saying? A man alive can say I made a statement on him. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. You can twist his narrative and try to just mean this and ain't nothing. It just don't work like that. Hustler, you know, his name is Hustler. So you know, you know, you only get a name like that because you hustle. You know what, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It ain't heroes, man, but it's, it's you know what I'm saying? We keep it lit. You know what I mean? And his story speaks for itself. You know, if you know who Hustler is and you know what he about. The bottom line is, I had to pay for all them years I was shining. 2003, they caught your boy grinding. Federal case, that's out of state. 13 case. Best friend turned snitch, told the whole shit. Had me your one, on the run, laying low. Oh, he fresh, man, it's nothing. You know, basically, you know. Actions speak louder than words, nigga. You know, we really get, 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 get me. Get, 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 get me. Get the shit. Get the shit. This is the one that's gonna appreciate, right? It's gonna appreciate? Shot about 21,000 now. Appraisal. By the time I get back, it'll be about around 30. But you know, I'm still not gonna sell it. I got the other drop under the cover right there. We got the Porsche over there under the cover. We got the Benz, you know, at the score right there. You know, it's nothing. You know, we keep it lit. You know, Young Cuts, AKA Since 88. Yeah! Ridiculous nigga with his lips. Yeah! I come through, I grab the mic and get the whip in. Yeah! Hustler, 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 hustler. You know, metal's an award for this shit, so it'll break your heart. You know what I mean? So don't have your heart in this shit, because your heart gonna get broken again, whether it's a motherfucker back on you, whether it's a motherfucker jealous of you, or, you know, the negative energy, the demonic people with demonic, you know what I'm saying, the miserable people. You know what I'm saying? It's like, bro, this is, is this what y'all want? This the kind of shit y'all want to, you know what I'm saying? They make me want to do shit like this. Is this what y'all, this the kind, is this what y'all gonna sell y'all soul from? Right. Is this what y'all gonna sell y'all soul from, bro? This is paper, bro. This shit don't do nothing, bro. Right, right, right. This shit, I got friends that give me shit like this, bro. Right, 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 right. Based right. on my merit and the kind of person I am, bro. The kind of, you know what I'm saying? The kind of guy I am, bro. They, I got friends that have thrown me this kind of stuff, bro. Right, right, Don't right. kill yourself for this shit, bro. This shit don't mean nothing, bro. I learned a lot in life, right? So, when the, like you said, slander, backdoor, jealousy, the evil eye, you know what I mean? I just, I, 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 that, I attracted all that. We checking back in, man. A humble soul. If you're not already subscribed, hit that button ASAP. Had a chance to check out an interview that Bay Area rapper Hustler did on Lil Blood's podcast, Lil Blood TV. For those of y'all who may not be familiar, you know, Hustler is a rapper, man, who got his start really in the, the late 90s, really, as a member of the Mob Figures, a five-man group. Living rap legend Sebo put out their debut project before he went away to prison. It was Hustler, The Jacker, AP9, FedEx, and Ryder J. Clyde. Basically, man, we was young and just made a group. We was ill, man. You know what I'm saying? All right. Nothing else to it, man. You know, no <laughs> typical answers, no typical. Yeah, I was so at the. Uh... How, how did you hook up with Sebo? Because it was. He heard it was a pack of young niggas that was dope as. Yeah. Got out of jail, came and found us. Went to the lab, sold 250,000 records, man. When was it? Nothing else to it, man. 97, 98, something like that? 99, 2000. 99, 2000? Mm -hmm. He was looking, he was starting a new label, and we had the talent. We didn't know we was going to be a group. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We was already like a group, you know, but we was all doing our solo thing. Me and Fetty was a group. Huss was a solo artist. Ryder J was a solo artist. And uh, AP9 was a solo artist. But, uh, cause, you know, we just always, we grew up together, like he said, and we, we recorded out of the same studio. So we was on a lot of the same shit anyway. So, um, you know, it was, we had chemistry, whether we liked it or not. We had but Hustler, you know, he, he spent some time in the feds and it was some controversy surrounding his name, you know, as far as him allegedly snitching on people that was on the case with him. Just a little background on what happened. According to the reports, Hustler was somebody who was 
linked up with this crew making money selling kilos and uh, Huss, he was transporting the keys from one spot to another. We actually got lucky. I just got back cross country drive. And then one particular situation, he ended up flying out to Chicago to pick up some keys. And while he was in the whip, the police pulled him over, searched the whip, and found 14 kilos in a spare tire. So from there, you know, they get charged and it's like this big this big indictment multiple people ended up locked up behind everything not just that particular case but that particular situation you know it was, it was bigger than that they had phones tapped they was already watching certain people that Huss was linked to but he ended up going down initially they was hitting them with conspiracy to distribute you know kilos of cocaine they dropped it down to possession with intent he ended up doing 55 months, from what I understand, before getting out. You know, I was getting money, man. I was a young brother, you know what I'm saying? Like 20 at the time, you know what I'm saying? They snatched me up with a few birds. You know what I mean? It was over 10. I was soft, so I qualified for, you know, it wasn't no mandatory minimum. So I ended up taking a five-piece, doing what real dudes do. Lay down, do your time, you know what I'm saying? These other dudes run around there collecting information and all that and trying to point fingers and all that, man. Everybody go down, you don't go down, man. Something wrong with you, man. Right. You feel me? Lay down, do your time, man. You can't expect to be on top winning all the time, man. And don't take your time, man. You know what I'm saying? That's the way it go, man. Real dudes do what they do. A lot of people was looking at him side eye, like how you get caught with 14 kilos and get released in 55 months and you a part of this big drug ring. But, um, you know, it was some back and forth with him and other Bay Area rappers. You know, a lot of people went to jail, got told on mm -hmm. And, you know, Huss got a little time behind it. He had something to do with everybody getting told on him. He debriefed and gave him all that info. Got that safety valve or whatever the f So, mm -hmm. it is what it is, man. Like, I, 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 in hindsight, like, it wasn't none of Jack of business other than he was friends with dude and my all I all I was like was like I was looking at it from a standpoint like look man, we rappers we role models from the P. People look at us and look at what we do, and the youth look at us and they gonna make decisions going forward in their life. They can fuck their life up and make or break they they life going forward. Like if we gonna be the role models, we should kick it the way it is. If you get caught out of the state with 10, 15 kilos in your trunk, you're gonna do ten years. Minimum. You're not gonna do three years. You ain't getting no magical deal because you're a special rapper. Like yeah. so, for Hustler to kick that message when he got out, I was anti that. And I, I... that's all the shit he made up allegations. He lied about us. So he realized he lied about us. So he just, you know, what I mean, he, you know, he tried to stand on his lie. But then, you know, once he realized, you know, he's lying. Shit, nigga, what you gonna do? I don't know. Give a fuck how. Nigga, Hustle never be cool enough to be a snitch, nigga. If you're a snitch. You a bitch ass nigga. You dead, nigga. I don't give a fuck how, how cool he niggas think he is or whatever it is. Nigga, if the nigga was red and he'd have been dead. You know what I mean? Come come from a real hill where real niggas gonna fuck around. So it's like, nigga, you know, we don't condone none of that shit. So, you know. But Hustler on Lil Blood's podcast, he revealed that he pretty much was somebody who got cooperated against, like people told on him. Although he ended up pleading guilty and admitting to his involvement in, you know, moving the keys. He said it's a lot deeper than what people know. And Hustler being somebody who's a gangster rapper, you know, he has a certain type of persona, a certain type of image. So to have that attached to his name is hurtful, but obviously he hasn't allowed it to really keep him from doing what he wants to do. You know, some stuff surfaced again recently about Hustler and this paperwork and this, that, and the third, you know. This is what your plea agreement say. Specifically, Defendant Ratliff acknowledged that a short time prior to June 27, 2001, he and Aaron Punce received instructions from Individual C to fly to Chicago and pick up 14 kilograms of C from Jose Fernando Garcia, AKA Lucho, the real Lucho and his real drug organization. Come on, bro. You know, I can't beat that net. What's up with y'all? 
Huh? You know little Mike? Where little Mike at? Oh, okay. That's a good friend of mine. I was trying to pay him a little visit. Where we at? What's the name of the street? What's the name of the street again? 88 from what? Shout out to you, OG. I remember you too when I was a youngster. You say what? It's good he ain't here though. There ain't nobody out here but cameras, huh? It's ain't nothing but cameras, huh? Why would my friend tell me to meet him here in nothing but cameras? That's crazy. I still love this neighborhood, though. Enough is enough, bro. Bro, we 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 gotta get rid of these that sucker shit, bro. Sucker shit do not work, and if it do, it's gonna be very temporary, and you are gonna pay that price for it. That cap can turn into a cap. You bro. feel me? That cap can turn into a hat, bro. And I ain't talking about the hat that that that, that, that you buy at the store. I'm talking about one of these kind of hats. He also, during the interview, talked about his relationship with the Jacka. Bay Area rap artist the Jacka, you know, one of my favorite artists. Unfortunately, he was killed in East Oakland back in February of 2015. On February 2nd, 2015, the music stopped. We've learned that a man shot and killed in Oakland tonight was a local rapper. He was shot and killed on this corner in East Oakland, which neighbors have nicknamed 94th and Jacka. From the stories that I've heard is that, you know, it was something unintentional, that it was, you know, a random thing that he wasn't even targeted or anything and was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Oh, I fuck with all kings. Look at my shirt, man. That's King Halle Selassie, man. You feel me? Back. His reports that came out that said that he wasn't the intended target, that, you know, he was at the wrong place at the wrong time. They were aiming for somebody else, but you know bullets, they don't, they don't got no names on them, man. Anybody can get hit when that trigger is pulled. And unfortunately, the Jacker was a casualty, man. Lost his life. Left behind, you know, a legacy. It was a lot of people he put on before he went away. He collaborated with a lot of different artists in California and beyond. Um, I actually got wind of the Jacker through Cormega, his work he did with Cormega. The Jacka Hustler, you know, they collaborated with Cormega, his whole legal hustle movement at the time. It's footage of them together, you know, in the Bay and all of that. See, we in California, we just left the hood. We was in Pablo houses. No security. California, we in the hoods. We ain't going to no pretty rich sea parts, you know what I mean? Fuck with the Bay Area. Me and my niggas. Big Jack. Big Hustler. You know. PK in front on the wheels. On the wheels still. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how we do things. Grimy, nigga. You know what I'm talking about? I'll tell you niggas about this crib. Yeah, man, we ride Buicks, man. You know what I'm talking about? 3800 Series 2 Supercharged, nigga. Blowing the highway patrol, blowing the boys, blowing everything, man. You know what I'm talking about? Niggas come through, man, on Lone Hearts, man. The rims cost more than the cop, man. You know what I'm talking about? 5,500, man. You look like your granddaddy's car, but it's nowhere near that. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to show you how they run in a minute, man. You know what I'm saying? Show you how we scrape. We call it yoking. You know what I'm saying? Gas and breaking it. You know what I'm saying? Dipping. You know what I'm talking about? Mob shit, East Bay. You know what I'm saying? West Coast, Pablo Housing, 3700 block. You know what I'm saying? Flares and hustlers, man. Gunning down suckers all day. Hustley ended up talking about his, his connection with the Jacka and how the Jacka's death pretty much broke his spirit and he lost an interest for making music for a long time. He really didn't put out, he, oh, he, he still hasn't put out a lot of music or a lot of visuals. He's not in the media like that, but he said that was one of the, the motivations behind him really taking a step back, losing the Jacka, man. So when Jack passed, it damaged my spirit in a certain way that I, I didn't really... You know, because I'm so used to, you know what I'm saying, it's part of the game. You got to keep going. You got to keep moving. But I kind of look back at it and it's like, I didn't do no more music as much as I want to because right. my brother not there. Right. So it's affecting me in other ways. Right. And then right. on the other side, the fans like, bro, why you not keeping it going? Ooh, it was like, bro, you got to understand me and bro started when we was 12, 13 years old. We started 12, 13 years old making music, bro. You know what I'm saying? Literally, real talk. And I know this ain't like, no, you know what I'm saying? We got right. songs at that age, bro. 
and doing all this music up to where Sibo discovered us to where it got we went from literally just some dusty little dudes, you know what I'm saying, and all the girls like, you know what I'm saying, that doing a little music in a little small town, bro, to, you know, all across the world. I definitely didn't want to, wasn't in the mood for music because, you know what I'm saying, I did a few shows without him, it just didn't feel right, bro. But shout out to Hustler, man, it was a dope interview, it's worth checking out, R.I.P. to the Jacka, you know, shout out to the mob figures and all of that. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to Lil Blood too, doing his thing, going from being an independent artist to somebody with a popping podcast platform right now, and he got his own style and his own conversation. It's dope to see him uh, evolve, you know. Um, but yeah, hit that button if you're not already subscribed to the channel. It's greatly appreciated, you know. Until next time, I'ma holler at y'all. One hundred.